Welcome back to the Amateur Extra License Study Exam. I'm sure you're tired of hearing that by now. We are on sub-element 9 echo still talking about that antenna theory. And so we'll start off with which matching system for Yagi antennas requires the driven element to be insulated from the boom. And that's going to be the beta or hairpin matching system beta or hairpin is insulated what antenna matching system matches coaxial cable to an antenna by connecting the shield to the center of the antenna and the conductor a fraction of a wavelength to one side that is called a gamma match the matching system matches coaxial cable to an antenna. It connects the shield to the center of the antenna and the conductor a fraction of a wavelength to one side. And that is a gamma match. And you can go find those on the web. Gamma matches is just a piece of coax cable. What matching system uses a short length of transmission line connected in parallel with the feed line at or near the feed point, and that is called a stub match? What is the purpose of the series capacitor in a gamma match? The capacitor is to, can to cancel unwanted inductive reactants. So, capacitor is to cancel inductive reactants. So, you use capa capacitive reactants and inductive reactants, and then you'll get uh, a nice little match there. What Yagi driven element feed point impedance is required to use a beta or hairpin matching system? The hairpin is sort of like a tiny little inductor. So you need capacitive, or the, where the driven element is electrically shorter than one-half wavelength. Which of these transmission line impedances would be suitable for constructing a quarter-wave Q section for matching a 100-ohm feed point impedance to a 50-ohm transmission line? And that would be quarter wave of 75 ohm cable or transmission line uh, if you would just want to remember 100 plus 50 divided by 2 is 75 uh, maybe one way to remember the answer to that one what parameter describes the interaction of a load and transmission line and that's going to be your reflection coefficient and I have that right here, voltage from forward wave, voltage from the reverse wave or the reflected wave, and you get that coefficient by just dividing the reference voltage of forward and your, uh, sorry, reflected, reflected over your forward, not reference, reflected, sorry about that. And that gives you your reflection coefficient. What is a use for a Wilkinson divider? That is to divide power equally between two 50 ohm loads while maintaining the 50 ohm input impedance. And this was discovered by a veteran of World War II, Mr. Wilkinson. And it is made just like this. So you need to know that quarter wavelength and the uh, it, uh, so much further than I ever wanted to go with one of these. But this kind of explains how they work. And you just figure out the size of that, size of that, and then the size of that for your impedance. And boom, there you go. Which of the following is used to shunt feed a grounded tower at its base? The shunt is the gamma match. 
What is the purpose of using multiple driven elements connected through phasing lines? Uh, we learned this earlier, and that's to control the antenna's radiation pattern. And depending on how you phase those lines and those elements, then you adjust how that pattern comes out. Now you can use Easy NEC and check some of that out. Alrighty, so join us again for yet another video. It'll be number 47, and then we'll get to safety.